Well, first, let me take the softball PGT testing. Uh, this is fraudulent. It used to be just a medical controversy whether or not you could predict the likelihood of pregnancy, a successful pregnancy, from looking at aneuploidy or euploidy in an embryo by doing an embryo biopsy. And frankly, we started all this in a way because it works extremely well for single gene diseases, like if you're carriers of cystic fibrosis. We were the first in the United States to really do this and to biopsy an embryo and not transfer the embryos that had a fatal disease. And uh, so we just transferred embryos that were healthy, and that was in 1994. But then the idea was, well, there are some embryos that might have an unequal number of chromosomes. And that's easy to do, just to count chromosomes. And uh, But we found out that that doesn't work. But many IVF centers, over half of them, are still pushing it, but they're calling it genetic testing because it sounds so good, we're gonna make sure it's a normal baby. But that's a fraud because all the control studies show that it just lowers your baby rate, it lowers your pregnancy rate because you misdiagnose embryos as abnormal that are really normal and would have been a baby and you throw them away. You throw away perfectly normal embryos that would have been babies because uh, the misdiagnosis is because of mosaicism. And there are a variety of euploid and aneuploid cells in every early embryo. But by the time the embryo develops and becomes a recognizable fetus, those aneuploid cells have disappeared and been replaced by the euploid cells. Uh, so that by the time you would have a CVS, even at, say, 10 weeks of pregnancy, uh, the placenta looks really good. But it really isn't good at first. And the trophectoderm has a lot of abnormal cells. And you just can't make a diagnosis that's reliable counting chromosomes. It is very reliable for single gene disease and mutations, uh, but that is not a common case. Common case is to try to do it. Common case is to try to do it for everyone, and it's just a money maker and a fraud. So that's PGTA. Now, uh, the other question um, that you had was, can we improve 40-year-old eggs? 40-year-old eggs will have a lower success rate than 30-year-old eggs. We know that, and. Uh, but what we can do is not hurt those eggs in the process of trying to retrieve them. We retrieve them with minimal stimulation, and then we get really much better quality eggs from 40-year-olds than with massive overdose and massive stimulation. So the mini IVF protocol we use is designed to get the best quality 40-year-old eggs we can get. So we have really good success rates with 40-year-olds. Now, the success rates tend to go down at 45, 46, and at 47, it's very, very unusual to have a successful pregnancy with eggs. It's possible, it's very unusual. But 40-year-olds, uh, we're really happy with 40-year-olds and 42-year-olds. And, and we'll do 45 and 46-year-olds as well, 48-year-olds. But they have to know that at that point, they're a really low success rate. But I think our success rate can be very high with someone in their early 40s. Mm -hmm.